looking at how to create a, a, a variable material within view and then how to publish the parameters affecting that material to the front end of the material editor. A complex example to start off with where you can see we have all sorts of sliders and controls related to the rock scene within this uh, uh, scene. Um, what we're looking for is a position for us all to be in whereby we can control the texture and the color of an object based on the published parameters. So let's go ahead and look at a simple sphere. So you can see in the preview window and the material, we have a, a gray sphere. Nothing, nothing complicated about the material at all. Let's have a look at the function editor. So initially we've got procedural colors. It's just a flat gray. What we're going to do is look within the function editor and we're going to look at the colors that we're going to use. So as usual, let's just tidy up the workspace so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to create as a simple example, uh, just a, a simple mix between two materials. So the first material, I'm going to change the color map to a color that I actually want. At the moment, you'll see uh, the color map itself is black to white. I'm just going to right click and reset the color map. And then I'm going to edit the color map. Let's make it a nice simple red. Okay, okay. So now we have a red sphere. We're going to look now at how we can make it two colors which can be blended. So I'm going to click and drag a marquee around all the nodes. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them. Let's edit the color map for this one. The color map, again, we will just make a fairly simple color, but this time we'll go blue. Okay. So now we want to find a way of blending these two colors together. I'm going to click on the color node and I'm going to a combiner node and I'm going to add a blender. And then connect this through to the two different colors. We want a color output and a color output. So the blender when it first comes in will be set at 50-50, i.e. half red and half blue, thereby giving us a nice shade of purple. So at this moment in time, nothing's changed at the front end of the material editor. It just is what it is. But now we want to be able to get to a position where we have sliders that control uh, the various elements within our scene. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click on color map and I'm going to go down to where it says color map. I'm going to click it and I'm going to click publish parameter. Let's have a look at the options within the publish parameter editor. So we have a name, the name of what uh, uh, this particular node is. So we'll just call it color one. And the group, you'll see why the group is important uh, in a moment. Let's just call this colors. Okay. So I'm going to go to color two. I'm going to publish that one. And this time I'm going to call it color two but leave it within the group of colors. Okay. Let's go to the front end of the material editor and see what difference that's made. You'll see now there is a new tab that says publish parameters. And you'll see at the moment we have color one and color two. Now this means we can edit from the front end of the material editor. This means we don't need to access the function graph to be able to edit. Obviously, what we would like in an ideal world is to be able to blend the two colors from the front end. So we're going to click on ratio. We're going to publish that parameter. And we're just going to call this blender. And we'll make a new group blender. Okay. And again, we can see something's happened because ratio has now turned green, which should mean in the function editor, uh, material editor at the front end, we can now see that we have some published parameters. And there we go. So now we can fade between red or blue 
or anywhere in between. So if we pop it down to 0.5, we should end up with a nice shade of purple. Now, obviously, that's a very, very simple material. Let's look at a slightly more complex material now. I'll just change cameras. So we're now looking at a stone. Let's look at the material and see how complex we can make our material. So on the variable rock and the published parameters, we now have access to a variety of different functions. We can blend colours. And we'll see in the preview when it refreshes, we've now changed the colour. We can blend between colours 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. But we can also blend the displacement types and the highlight types. Let's have a quick look at the function editor. You can see what we end up with. Don't be put off by this because if we look at this, the structures, just basically what we had before. We have four colours which have been blended and then blended again because the blender only handles two inputs. So I've blended colours one and two and then three and four. I've uh, changed the colour of the node here simply for my reference. It just makes it easier to see what nodes I've changed and where they're located. So if we follow that uh, system we can go through and highlight all of the blender nodes. You could make them all the same colour, you could make them different colours. It's entirely up to you for whatever way you want to work. So as I say, to reiterate, we have the colour section. We have the displacement section, which is linked through to the original fractal um, dis dispersion of the colours. And I've just added a few extra little bits here and there that control the highlight, the highlight colour, which have all been transferred to the front end. So we have published parameters that we can adjust and mix between different rock types. One last quick example, which is the moray eel, where the material has been based upon bitmaps or image um, maps. So you can see here again, pretty much the same as the rock in many ways. We have our colour section where we are flicking between different colour schemes, spots, etc. But I just added a secondary set of nodes here which control the strikiness of the moray eel. So we can blend between all of these different functions to effectively change the colour of the moray eel. I hope you found that useful. Please feel free to comment via social media. Thank you very much.